There comes a time when a game truly brings out our inner emotions, where we get sucked into the universe and glance at the imagination work its magic. We feel connection between the characters and not only take control, but, but become one with the player. Pikmin for the GameCube captures that original aspect and leaves us with an unforgettable experience. You control Captain Olimar, whose spaceship has crash-landed on a strange, mysterious planet. The parts of the ship have scattered around the planet, and you must collect all 30 parts in 30 days. This is where the Pikmin provide you with a helping hand. There are three different colored Pikmin. Red, Yellow, and Blue. Red is what you first encounter. Yellow and Blue are discovered later on. The Blue can withstand water. Yellow can be thrown high and pick up bomb rocks, and red are immune to fire, so use red when you are battling this jerk who blows fire. Fighting creatures eliminates their distraction and creates more pigment to help along. When the creatures are taken down, you throw the needed amount to help carry it back to their onion. You can also use these flowers to produce more, but the monstrous beasts create many more pigment. The perfect controls make maneuvering the Pikmin seamless. You can blow the whistle for commands and control where the Pikmin walk. You can distance the camera however you want and position it for the best view and comfort. When you are looking upon your surroundings, you will be amazed by the colorful scenery and bright environment. Everything is nicely detailed and laid out naturally. Each section's music gives you a calm, soothing sound that makes you feel as if you are discovering something. It sets the mood to what you are going to achieve. What makes this game so fascinating is how you think on tackling each day. You only have until sunset, so you have to plan accordingly. Pikmin can't be around after dark because of the hungry monsters and it's too dangerous for Olimar. So the sunlight graces down and leads the way for you to accomplish your mission. As you lead the Pikmin, you learn that they take direction very well and carry tremendous courage with them. The Pikmin know the dangers ahead of them, but still follow your command. Whether it's destroying or obtaining, the Pikmin work together as a team to help a friend in need. It's a good thing the Pikmin aren't afraid, because the monsters show no mercy on them. There are many different species you fend upon and each have their own way of attacking the Pikmin. Some eat the Pikmin, others gobble them up in bunches. Cruelty also comes into factor like when some just like to squash them to death. It's always painful to watch the Pikmin get deceased. I feel the enemies that don't kill a Pikmin contain a more fearsome and vicious side to them. Take a look at this guy, he flies around then dives towards the Pikmin, grabs two, flies somewhere else, and buries them back in the ground. When I see these kinds, I make sure the Pikmin gang up on it and debilitate it. This puff of air just glides around and then gives a big huff at the Pikmin and blows at them, making them go all over the place. These guys just clown on us, making them more crude. The Pikmin don't die, but they lose their flower, making them back to a leaf. This is when you need them to eat some yellow nectar to regain strength. After you pluck out a Pikmin, they withhold a leaf on their head. The first thing to do is find a patch of grass and have the Pikmin eat it and transform into a flower. The flower makes them walk faster and attack with more strength. As you progress through the land, you will start becoming more strategic and creative at obtaining your desired items. There are many obstacles you will overcome to gather your parts. Items will be laying in the water. This obviously calls for the blue Pikmin, but there are creatures that will hurt them. You can use yourself as a distraction to help them carry the item with no worries. If there is no path for the Pikmin to travel upon, you must create a path. Breaking down or blowing up a wall creates a route for you and your Pikmin to walk among areas unattainable. Building a bridge helps so yellow and red Pikmin can go where only blue Pikmin could walk amongst. By taking care of these roadblocks helps the Pikmin endure more tasks at a faster rate. Finding an enemy's weak spot is a must to kill them profoundly. If you go full force, you will most likely lose a few Pikmin and we don't want that. Attacking from the back is a good way to catch them off guard. 
or go all at once to finish them as fast as possible so they got no time to react. This is what happens when you randomly attack. Your Pikmin get hammered in the ground. At least this rock guy doesn't kill them, but still, now I gotta pull them all out. There is no right or wrong way to acquire a part. You do whichever works best for you, but you will all agree this one way wasn't very smart. This item is high up on the ledge so the yellow Pikmin can reach, but there is water below. So take a guess what happens when they come off the ledge. That's right, 20 yellow Pikmin drowned. I still managed to gather the item with blue Pikmin, but at the yellow Pikmin's expense. The better way would have to travel around this wall and throw blue Pikmin since they could reach at higher ground. This is what happens when you don't think things through. When you stumble on an item that requires all three types of Pikmin, it's imperative you think things through. You gotta scout the field and make sure when to switch Pikmin. Use blue to build the geyser to shoot you higher, throw yellow to reach, bring the item to lower ground, then have the red carry it through the fire holes. It's all about teamwork. It's essential for teamwork to battle the creatures that have gobbled up an item. These beasts take longer to knock out and require as many Pikmin on the field. You are allowed 100 at most outside their onion, but that's more than enough. This is where you must maintain the Pikmin in order to successfully defeat the beast. If you don't call them back fast enough, they will suffer at the consequences, but don't worry. All that time fighting others will prepare you to win. Once you have collected 29 out of the 30 parts, you are shipped off to face against the final monster who carries the final piece to your spaceship. After you get the Pikmin through this puzzle, you come across a tremendously terrifying enormous monster. It has a wide range of attacks, using its tongue, sitting on, and surprisingly jumping high and slamming down a strong stomp. This truly is the battle to end all battles. It's time for the Pikmin's bravery, strength, honor, heart, and sacrifice. That's right, they must head on full force to claim victory. It's as if the Pikmin know this is what they are meant to do, like it's their destiny. It is certainly going to be painful to watch, but we know it must be done. As you watch the Pikmin fight, you start to reflect on the time you spent with them. They helped you rebuild your ship and gave you comfort during your loneliness. You helped take care of them and learned about a new species. The Pikmin are so friendly and caring, but there were times when you wouldn't want one Pikmin to die, so you would attack an enemy on your own. That is how much you grow in attachment to the Pikmin. When you retrieve the final piece, we see the remaining Pikmin wave goodbye to Olimar. As the ship sets off, we see the onions of different color follow along. A group of different color came together to help out someone in trouble. That is what makes this a remarkable adventure. We feel rewarded that we made a new family and went through an amazing experience. Everything about the game is perfect. The game brings out a leader in yourself and brings a sentimental value for the Pikmin, which we will reunite again for a new adventure.